wave of Camp Pendleton Marines comes back from war as President Bush prepares to address the nation on Iraq. It's a big party in the middle of downtown, but there are complaints its impact on an important community's resource. And find out why the San Diego State Aztecs get a standing O in Columbus, Ohio. The news at 6 starts right now. NBC 739 News at 6, Weekend Edition. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Catherine Garcia. And I'm Greg Mills. Marines who saw some of the heaviest fighting in Operation Iraqi Freedom are back home tonight at Camp Pendleton. More than 1,000 members of the 3rd Battalion, 5th Regiment, are arriving in stages over the weekend. They return as President Bush prepares to talk to the nation about Iraq and looks for help supporting the U.S. effort. A search is on for a man wanted in a crime spree that started with a carjacking. Police say a volunteer for the homeless was giving a ride through Claremont to Lee Shepard. They say he threatened her with a knife and tried to rape her. She escaped. Police say Shepard then took her car and drove to Linda Vista. There, he allegedly grabbed a woman and threatened to kill her. She got away. Police say Shepard ditched the car, took the money from the victim's purse, paid a bystander who drove him to a trolley station. They are not sure where he went from there. The Disneyland in Tokyo has shut down its Thunder Mountain ride until the cause of the deadly accident in Anaheim is determined. Investigators were checking out the roller coaster again today. One man was killed, 10 others hurt yesterday. The locomotive separated from the rest of the train and derailed. Four people are presumed dead after Bermuda was hit by the biggest hurricane in half a century. The Coast Guard was surveying the damage today. Divers are searching for four people whose cars were swept off a causeway. Tens of thousands of homes on the island are without power. Trees are down, roofs are damaged. Many of the famous golf courses are in ruins, and there are reports of widespread flooding. The storm system Henri is losing punch as it crosses land, but still causing problems. Heavy rain along Florida's Gulf Coast flooded homes and closed roads. There's also scattered flooding in South Carolina and Georgia. Henri has been downgraded to a tropical depression. It's been moving faster than forecast, so it did not dump as much rain as expected. But forecasters think it may gain strength again as it hits the Atlantic. Well, no buts about it. Local teens want teen smoking to stop. 28 members of the Youth Tobacco Prevention Corps made their position known today at Moonlight State Beach in Encinitas. It coincides with an effort this month to make beaches in Del Mar, Encinitas, and Solana Beach smoke-free. The group has been studying the teen smoking problem, including buying cigarettes undercover from stores, where they were successful at that 30% of the time. They say the teen smoking problem will continue unless retailers jump on board. Tobacco really is a game. After the press conference, the teens organized a free concert on the beach. I don't know who wrote this, but it wasn't me, okay? It was a grape day to be in Escondido today. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, we're talking about the annual Grape Day Festival. Crowds enjoyed all sorts of music, wine, grape juice, an art show, and supposedly even grape stomping. They've been celebrating Great Day for almost 100 years now. The first one back in 1908. Back then, the county had dozens of vineyards and thousands of acres of grapes. In good times and bad, locals credit the grape for keeping the economy going. Well, Great Day, street scene, a whole bunch more. It's a busy weekend in San Diego. Check out all that's happening on NBCSanDiego.com. Click on Best Bets. I think that was a grape story. <laughs> I didn't write it. I didn't write it. Azusa Pacific. Quite a shot, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> I, I wish I could do that. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Take a lot of practice, probably, great, Catherine. Great <laughs> a lot of luck for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Whitney's up next. He's got your forecast. Right <laughs> oh. Are you awake at this time? Right? I absolutely. Yeah. I am so awake. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you got the ready-made excuse? You just say, hey, folks, I'm usually not awake at this hour. <laughs> no, nah, you know, I'm usually awake at this hour. It's 20 minutes from now. I'm usually oh, okay. Awake. There exactly. you go. Thank you. Well, coming up at 11, a California City Council may become the first lawmaking body in the nation to ask Congress to impeach President Bush. And word that a couple of the biggest pop music performers of all time will reunite for a concert tour. Join us at 11. See you then. Have a good night. NBC 739 News at 11, Weekend Edition. A struggle for sobriety, employees of a drug and alcohol treatment center say street scene is putting their patients at risk. 
Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Mills. And it's a weekend filled with happy homecomings at Camp Pendleton. More than a thousand Marines are returning from Iraq. And tomorrow night, President Bush plans to speak to the nation about the situation in Iraq and the war on terror. It's also his first address since he landed on the deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln and declared an end to the major combat in Iraq. The president will speak at 5.30 p.m. our time. You can watch it right here on NBC 739. A former manager of the Cheetah's Strip Club in Kearney Mesa claims he was fired because he wouldn't contribute to the campaign funds of several politicians. According to the Union Tribune, Vincent Tomasello filed a wrongful termination lawsuit. It was entered the day after his former boss, Michael Gallardi, was charged with extortion, wire fraud, and interstate travel in aid of racketeering. Gallardi pleaded not guilty to those charges. Five other people were also indicted, including local city councilman Ralph Nzunza, Charles Lewis, and Michael Zuckett. The councilmen are accused of taking money in exchange for trying to repeal the city's no-touch rule for strip clubs. They also pleaded not guilty. Up next, word that a couple of the biggest pop music performers in history will be reuniting for a concert tour. Plus, a direct hit from a powerful hurricane. Rescue crews in Bermuda are just now learning the extent of the damage from the deadly storm. And here you go. Here's a look at tonight's winning Super Lotto numbers. Good luck. Four people are presumed dead after Bermuda was hit by the biggest hurricane in half a century. The storm caused widespread damage when it hit the island with 120 mile an hour winds yesterday. Coast Guard divers are searching for four people whose cars were swept off a causeway. Tens of thousands of homes on the islands are without power. Trees are down, roofs are damaged, Many of the famous golf courses are in ruins. There are also reports of widespread flooding. The storm system Henri is losing its punch as it hits land, but still causing problems. Heavy rain along Florida's Gulf Coast flooded homes and closed roads. There's also scattered flooding in South Carolina and Georgia. And we woke up the morning guy, Whitney, to come out and join us at night. Good to see you. Wake me up again, yeah. <laughs> Good Finally, deal. a little relief from that heat. Mm -hmm. See, when you Sounds come good. here, you give us a weather forecast and teach us things about sharks. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Whitney. Well, a close game as the Aztecs take on Ohio State. We're going to have highlights coming up next in sports. Folk music fans may soon be able to hear the 60s hits Mrs. Robinson and Bridge Over Troubled Water live in concert. On Tuesday, superstars Simon and Garfunkel are expected to announce they are reuniting. Their publicists say... Concert dates are already being reserved at arenas around the country. Simon and Garfunkel broke up more than three decades ago. They've reportedly had a difficult relationship ever since. I wish you could see how excited Whitney was. About that. <laughs> That's my type of music. Simon and Garfunkel too. coming back? Yeah. I'm with Whitney. Yeah. That is pretty That's exciting. Awesome. Stuff. Meantime, if you're an Aztec alum, yeah. be proud of your football. No Boy, what a performance, huh? Unbelievable. Yes. Tomorrow coming up. What a great weekend for sports. And coming up next, we got uh, Senator John McCain. He hosts Saturday Night Live with uh, musical guest, The White Stripes. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow. See you then. Greg Mills is in Kearney Mesa, live with a look. Hi, Greg. Hi, Ann. And boy, 227 a gallon. That's why I saw one gas station in San Diego. And as you mentioned, they're high right now. Going to get higher in about an hour. Tomorrow, the prices go up. Prices at the highest level they've been since last April. The numbers are in. Oh, they're outrageous. The reviews are not good. And these prices is high. You're going to empty your wallet to fill up your tank. I've never seen prices go up this quickly. 18 cents in four days. At this San Diego gas station, the owner has raised prices 20 cents in just over a week. And he says he's not happy about it. Uh, I hardly make two cents per gallon right now. Hardly. He says he doesn't like charging high prices. Really? He says it drives the customers away. Look at the gas station empty. Today, Friday, it should be very busy. While we're at this gas station, the owner is notified he must raise prices again at midnight. Gas prices all over San Diego County are expected to go up this Saturday. No kidding. No kidding. Why the sudden increases? Well, we're told a broken pipeline between Phoenix and El Paso is the reason gas supplies are in short supply here and prices are going through the roof to compensate. It's got to pay the price. Is there a way to beat it? Well, yes, but you got to rely on manpower.